Earlier this week, I blood tested for the second time in 2022. And note that this is my 36th blood test since August of 2015. So with that in mind, what's my biological age? So here we can see the nine biomarkers that are contained within Morgan Levine's phenotypic age calculator, which is a metric for calculating biological age. And if, if you have your own data for this, you can calculate your own biological age using Levine's test. Uh, there's a link in the video's description, so feel free to use that. Now also note that full blood test data with screenshots for the lab reports will be at the end of the video. All right, so when entering these bi nine biomarker values, we can see that my phenotypic age or my biological age is 35.4 years, which is 13.7 years younger than my chronological. So as a quick note, note that uh, Quest, which was the lab that performed these measurements, uh, Quest high sensitivity C-reactive protein measurement was defined as less than 0.3 milligrams per liter, which means that the upper limit of my value was at most 0.3, but it could be somewhere lower than that as my data seems to be below their limit of detection. So the 35.4 could be somewhat better, but it's not worse than 35.4. All right, so for more context, let's have a look at more biological age results since 2018. One, one blood test is important, but let's see what the trends are over the past few years. And we can see that data here. Uh, we've got biological age on the y-axis plotted against time. So I first started uh, measuring C-reactive protein in 2018. Uh, that's why I have relatively few data points uh, going back to uh, four, four years. So from 2018 to 2019, we can see that I only have three blood test, three blood test values for phenotypic age over that two-year period. And my average biological age uh, was 36.1 years. So then in 2020, I decided to test more often. And then we can see over six tests in 2020, my average Levine's test pheno age or biological age was 35.6 years. Similarly, it was also 35.6 years in six tests in 2021. And then we can see the two green dots are 2022. And my average so far over those first two tests is 34 years. Now note that prior to 2022, my average pheno age age reduction was 11.9 years. So about 12 years younger than my chronological over 15 tests from 2018 through 2021. In 2022, so far over those two tests, I now have a 15 year average reduction. Uh, so that's a further three year reduction. So I, 2022 is off to a good start. So note that pheno age includes chron chronological age in its model, which limits the maximum biological age reduction. It's only about a 20 year reduction that one can obtain. And if you're 80 years old, but you're, all your biomarkers in that test are youthful, are you really somewhere around 60 or some uh, age younger? So in contrast, aging.ai does not include chronological age in its model, so greater reductions for biological age are possible. So let's have a look at that data. So aging.ai is also a free to use uh, tool, and I should note I'm not sponsored by Morgan Levine or her lab or aging.ai, I'm just using these tools. So when entering the 19 biomarkers on aging.ai, uh, as we can see here, and for anyone who wants to double check my data, uh, you can enter these data and using the North American data set, I'm, I've always been in the United States for my whole, my whole life, so I use that data set. Uh, so we can check my uh, results if you're interested. So when entering these 19 biomarker values, we can see that my aging.ai age is 28 years old, which is 21.1 years younger than my chronological. So just like we did for Levine's test, looking at more context over the past few years, let's do the same thing for aging.ai. How does this 28-year-old biological age with aging.ai uh, look in comparison to all the rest of my data over the past few years? So I have a lot more data for aging.ai going all the way back to 2009, and that's because uh, C-reactive protein isn't a commonly performed measurement in uh, the standard blood test that you go at a, to, when you get at a yearly physical. So I've had to add that on to my test when I, when I measure. So going back to 2009, I wasn't measuring C-reactive protein at my blood test because it wasn't a commonly available uh, measurement. So that's why I have more data for aging.ai because all of these 19 component biomarkers are found on a standard chemistry panel and a complete blood count CBC. So from 2009 to 2013, I was only going to the doctor about once a year at most. And in, we, as we can see over that about five year period, I only had three blood test measurements for aging.ai age and my average age was 32 years. And that was pre-diet tracking. So back then I wasn't tracking my diet every day and I started that in April of 2015. So uh, weighing all my food, entering those amounts into an online nutrition app, recording that data into an Excel file, and then looking at correlations between the blood test data with the diet data, and then trying to optimize the blood biomarkers by using my diet. So since April of 2015, since I started that, over 28 tests, we can see that my average aging.ai age is 29.8 years. 
So interestingly, for 2022, we can see that the first measurement was 26, which is about four years younger than my average over that uh, seven, around seven year period. And then similarly for the last test, it was 28, which is still about two years younger than that about 30 year average over these 28 blood tests. So, uh, so, so far in 2022, that three year reduction uh, also off to a good start when looking at aging.ai data. All right, so how am I doing this? So what's contributing to the 13.7 year reduction using Levine's test and 21.1 year reduction using aging.ai? What, what's my diet? What was the diet composition that corresponds to this test? What's my cardiovascular fitness metrics? What do they look like? So heart rate variability, resting heart rate. And what about supplements? What am I taking? Uh, so I'll include that data in two upcoming videos. I'm going to split all that. It's a lot of information. So I'm going to split it into two videos. Uh, probably the CV uh, fitness data will, will be first with the supplements. So stay tuned for that. All right, that's all for now. If you're interested in more about my attempts to biohack aging, check us out on Patreon. Thanks for watching. I hope that you enjoyed the video. Have a great day.